We will start, and I want to welcome you all to the opening of our exhibit. My name is Markus Kra. I'm the executive director of the Leo Beck Institute, which uh, sponsored the exhibit um, about German, three waves of German Jewish immigration to the United States. Some of you have attended today a day-long symposium on immigration, so you must be full of impressions and thoughts, and I don't want to keep you for too long, but invite you to take a look at this exhibit um, here in our Goldsmith Galleries, as I said, about three waves of German Jewish immigration. Um, let me begin by pointing to the person who is responsible for this exhibit. This is our curator, Dr. Magda Robel. Magda, please raise your hand and give it up for Magda, who brought this wonderful exhibit to us. As you see, it's a relatively small exhibit about a big topic. It is fairly self-explanatory. If you have any questions about the exhibit, you know, Magda is here. And starting April 15th, there will be also guided tours by docents. So if you want to come back and have more questions on this, um, stay tuned for that. Much of what you can see in the exhibit is based on what we at LBI have in our archival collections. For those of you who don't know, the Leo Beck Institute was founded almost 70 years ago in 1955 by a group of German Jewish refugee intellectuals who felt the urge to preserve and promote German Jewish history and culture. So they created the Leo Beck Institute in 1955, assuming that they would write the final chapter of German Jewish history, that this might take 10 years or so, and then the work would be done things turned out differently. So it's been almost 70 years and we are still here. And our impression is, and I hope you share it, that preserving and promoting the history of German-speaking Jewry has become ever more important over the past decades, um, which is why we offer exhibits like the one you are seeing, why we support scholarships to, uh, for scholars to work in our archives, which is why we keep collecting material, we digitize all the materials we get whatever you are interested in in German Jewish history, go on lbi.org and hit the t type what you're interested in into the search field. And chances are that you will come up with a number of hits. We have almost 5 million digitized pages of archival material, family collections. Um, I invite you to explore this and see the many amazing personal stories, big and small, which uh, we have been entrusted to preserve in our archives. And at the same time, we try to show the relevance of these stories um, to contemporary questions. And immigration, obviously, is one of the most topical issues that we've been debating. And we think that there is a lot to learn from history, from German Jewish history. The exhibit is one way to present our material. We offer our historical expertise to scholars. We have a podcast which tells the stories of German, Jewish, German Jews in exile. That's the title of the podcast, narrated by Mandy Patinkin. We offer lectures and book clubs and many other ways to access German Jewish history as it is preserved in our archives. The exhibit which you can see today focuses on some of the lesser known aspects of these voyages of German Jews to the United States. It focuses on the decision-making processes, the practicalities of immigration, the transnational contacts people had or did not have before they came to the US, which could have made all the difference um, about their fate. Not all of the stories that make up this great panoply of the experience of German Jewish immigration to the US made it into the exhibit. Let me just share one more story with you, which to me illustrates the the, the tragedies, the craziness, the weirdness, the excitement of these processes. One of our board members recently came across a, an article in the New York Times which was dated June 13, 1936. The title is, Radium Vanishes on Voyage Here. Dr. Ludwig Heine tells police $4,500 worth disappeared from his luggage discovered loss of 11 capsules only after he had arrived at hotel in Kew Gardens. This was the headline, June 13, 1936. So what happened here? What happened is 
that given the restrictions of what Jews leaving Germany at that time could take with them, Dr. Heine, the grandfather of our board member, who was a medical doctor, decided to take radioactive radium on his trip. He put it in, his, put it in a lead-lined trunk, brought it all the way from Germany to New York, opened the trunk in his hotel room in Kew Gardens and found that it had been stolen. We don't know who, but we can assume that the person who stole it probably faced a terrible punishment for what they did, given the radioactive material. Um, so, in a nutshell, this story encapsulates to me both the radiant qualities of this experience, the tragedies, uh, the stories that made the headlines, and the many stories that did not make the headlines. I invite you to explore all of them, which you can see here in the exhibits in our archives. Um, come back for more if you're interested, and thank you for coming. Please take a look at the exhibit, and when you're done, there are refreshments both on this floor and downstairs. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to LBI.